I'm an artist working with photography and I use large format images to capture the night. Urban spaces are my particular interest and I'm looking for that which is sort of um, dismissed, marginal, but has its own luminosity somehow. I'm very privileged living on top of a high-rise in East London where I have the most wonderful views of the city and of a transforming city. So that keeps me very close to the change of London. But at the same time, I have my, my interior space with my books, my archive, my work to focus on that. So there's this constant tension and dialogue between the inside and the outside. And sometimes, you know, as an artist, it's a... It's also a challenge to go out and, and make the work. It's not like it's always, you're always ready to do it. No, you have to also psych yourself up to take the lift down and go out in the world and make a work. What's quite specific about my photographs is that there's no people in them. So it's uh, very much about the, the few are making this imaginary leap into the image, so they inhabit the image. And the question of inhabitation is also crucial for me because the city as a place we share, we live in, we inhabit, where we can dwell, where one can find a home. And the home isn't necessarily domestic space, it's also uh, finding a home in the public space. So that's been quite crucial to my work early on, to understand the public space as something that can be a space you feel at home in. Because there was always an interest in a wider audience. So very early on, one of my works, Towering Inferno, was used by the streets for an album cover. So it had this huge dissemination as a poster, as a as the vinyl, as the whatever CD into so many teenagers' bedrooms. So that kind of interaction, dissemination was, um, even before social media, quite a key to how my work was um, entered the wider world. Always from the beginning, I tried to find interlocutors. So with interlocutors, I mean writers, philosophers, curators, who I've had very strong relationship with. For example, the philosopher Alexander Garcia Dutman, he's been a very close interlocutor for decades now. He's written about my work, he's critiqued my work intensely. That for me is a very important way for an artist to be part of how the work is understood. There's a twofold challenge for the artist. On one side, you have to be as open as possible, and it's, you have to be generous with your work and share it and give it out and say it is. But on the other side, you also want to have certain types of deeper engagements which can lead to the next work. So through that uh, in-depth discourse, the next work, can emerge and sometimes you need the critical voice to understand what you've done yourself. So I inhabit this position where I'm very enthusiastic about analog processes but at the same time I'm very interested in new technologies because they allow for different ways of making work and presenting work. So I just made a large-scale public artwork for which I used large format analog negatives, which were then scanned and from the scan a mold was made from which a cast, a concrete cast of a photograph uh, resulted. So that became the silver forest, which I show on the facade of Westminster City Council. So that shows how the process or the, the conversation between analog and digital can be extremely fruitful. For an artist to have a sense of control over their own work is super important. And I'm really happy that I'm, I sort of know 
where my work is, what it is doing, how it is sort of disseminated in the world. So I keep in cardboard boxes the negatives and I keep the test prints and I keep also the failures. I keep the things which didn't quite work out, but maybe one day I will look back at it and think, actually this is quite good. So the boxes are full of, in a way they're still active. They're not done and dusted. They still resonate because I have to go back to them and they might still have something important lurking in them. And then the digital archive, of course, that I think in a way that's the one which troubles me more. Because it is, I see it as um, even more active. It's completely um, unfixed. Photography is also quite interesting in that respect that it has changed completely. Now it's, um, it needs to be disseminated as a digital medium. So there's two archives. There's the material archive of the negatives, but also a digital archive. And frankly, it's vast. And to sort of understand what's the best way of chronicling, figuring out a system is challenging for me. Sometimes I think we need to find a different word instead of archive, because archive suggests something that's finished, that's done. And I think it's more of a repository, something that's still being used constantly and that has to be, has to be still uh, active in the most intense way. Something that still has to make, lead to making more work that helps me in being an, ar an artist. So it's, it's, my, it's my source material as well. And it's, uh, it's an odd relationship I personally have to the, to the digital image because it's not the one I initially made. And it uh, exists in so, so many variations as well. So that's, that complicates the, the, the question of the archive immensely for me. I still shoot on analog, I still print from analog, I still have a handcrafted analog print, but I also need a digital image. So what happens to my work when I'm no longer there to control it and to print it, oversee the printing process? Um, so one way of handling it is I have an edition, so my work is in a quite a small edition, Yet, at the same time, I'm quite fascinated by this shift that we are seeing now with the digital um, relationship to photography. And although I'm not shooting digitally, I'm, I'm sort of... Um, it is also part of my work somehow. I cannot uh, deny it. So working with an archivist helped me to understand that I had to be a bit more careful with my negatives, use archival material to store the, the works, and also find a more workable system where the work is more, um, not just to my own arcane system, but to maybe an assistant would be able to quickly understand how this is organized. For me, the role of the artist has always been more than just making your own work. It's also about teaching, disseminating your knowledge, working with students, which I do at the Royal College of Art for many years. And also I've run an experimental art space called Fillet with Uta Kugelsberger, who is my neighbor and colleague. The a digital system now can also offer something quite systematic. And so it's just about having the right apps and um, uh, structure. And all of a sudden this sort of ideal scenario where everything is accessible, is can be cross-referenced, appears. So I've been working with um, a sort of digital archivist on developing this and fingers crossed everything will be easy soon. <laughs>